Hi again, everybody. Neil Malik from Knack Training, bringing you another everyday office video. In today's video, I want to be able to isolate different parts of a chart for different parts of our conversation inside of PowerPoint. So um, as you can very easily see here, we have some green dots, some light blue dots, and some dark blue dots. And what I would love is the ability to click a button and either turn the green dots on or off, turn the dark blue dots on or off, turn the light blue dots on or off. So that, you know, for instance, we could compare dark blue versus light blue and leave off the green and the red or those you know those sorts of ideas so we could compare and contrast different subsets of the information or try to find trends in different subsets of the information so to make this work we're going to need two different uh, things to happen uh, the first is we're going to have to break this chart into pieces this is a, a normal chart you know it could have come in from Excel I made this natively in PowerPoint but it works the same way both ways um, but we need to break this into its actual drawing components so that we can individually target the different uh, elements and secondly, we need to not only have animations, but we need to have what are called triggers, basically just buttons that will sit on the page so we can turn different things on and off. So the first step is to, uh, to convert this into shapes effectively. So it's no longer an interactive chart that we can change the numbers in. Now it's something that we can move stuff around. So in case you've never done this before, everybody, your first step is to click the slide itself use the keyboard shortcut control D to duplicate that uh, slide then you want to click on the original slide then go to your slideshow tab up here at the top and hide that slide and maybe even put in a little text box right so I can put a text box here that says something like um, original data do not delete or something like that right so that I can very easily come back to this later and say oh you know what our numbers changed uh, let me make sure that the chart reflects that change okay so we have a hidden slide with the original data in it now we can break this slide without feeling too much pain about it we click onto the original chart cut the chart so control X on the keyboard to actually cut it off the slide and then on the paste drop down menu you don't just want to choose to paste a picture because this will be a very flat picture instead under the paste drop down menu I want to choose paste special and from here I want to paste an enhanced meta file so enhanced meta file is an image that can be broken into its components so I'll click on Enhanced Meta File here and click OK. Now at this point, as you can see, it's all one unit, right? So let me just go ahead and square this up a little bit. It's all one unit, and in fact, I can go up to the Arrange drop-down menu, and I can click on something called the Selection Pane to be able to see what's actually happening in the slide. So you can see right now, as far as PowerPoint's concerned, this is just something called Picture 1. So again, Home tab, Arrange drop-down menu, Selection Pane. So now what I'm going to do is use the Arrange drop-down menu and choose to ungroup it. It says, are you sure you want to do that? Yes. Click Yes. And now you can see there's a group with all these ovals inside of it. Oh, we're almost there. Go one more step. Go to the Arrange drop-down menu and ungroup it again. And now you can see every one of these components is its own little thing. We can do anything we want with any of these different graphics. Now the unfortunate thing is that during that process, if you had these kind of nicely stylized, you can see they're now flat color with this uh, dark black uh, outline around it. So you can click on these shapes now and just go ahead and format them in a way that makes you happy. You know, maybe something that's a little glossy, something that's got a drop shadow behind it, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat here. I'm going to go ahead and pick this thing right there. Okay. That's a little too flat. Let's go with this guy. Okay, so then we format and format, and we do the same thing with the light blue ones just to make sure that it's clean. And the red and the blue. Okay, 
So what I need is for these different shapes to both appear and disappear because the basic concept is we want to chart either where they're all there to begin with or where they're not all there to begin with one way or another, but then we want to be able to turn them on and off like flipping a switch. So we can very easily do that. Just click on the first one, hold down the control key and click on all these shapes here. And we're going to add, whoops, there we go. We're going to add two animations to this. Uh, first, we're going to go to the animations tab and tell them all to appear. Now we could make them fade, um, but I want them to go really fast. So I'll go up here. And then I'll go to the add animation drop down menu and also add the opposite, which is disappear. So now every one of these shapes both appears and it disappears. So there's an on and an off there. To see this much more clearly, I can click on my animation pane right up here at the top and you can see oval 17 and 16 and 13 and 14 and 15. They all come in and they all go out. Pretty good. If I were to start this uh, presentation at this point, it would be an empty grid. Once I clicked, all the shapes would appear. And once I clicked again, all the shapes would disappear. So I don't want that to happen. I want this to be something where I'm in complete control of all these different elements. This is where that selection pane is going to come in handy because I can tell you right now, you're not going to be able to keep track of which one oval 12 is and which one oval 14 is. But when you click on oval 17 and it highlights one of those light blue bubbles right there, you can double click on the name and you can give it a better name. Like uh, let's say LB for light blue and then 01. And when I click on oval 16 and it highlights that dark blue one, I can double click on it and I can call this DB01. Oval 15 is gonna become LB02. Oval 14 is going to become G01. 13 is going to become DB02. 12 is going to become R01. 11 is going to become G02. 10 is LB03, and 9 is G03. So now they all have very easily identifiable names, and you can watch in the animation pane right here, oh, this is the light blue one, this is a dark blue one, this is a green one, this is a red one. It makes a lot more sense now. And if you want to write these out as really like light blue 01, dark blue 01, or red 01, feel free to do that. I'm just going to go simpler. And now I need to add little buttons that I can press to make these animations happen. So that's just shapes. I'll go to insert, I'll go to my shapes, and you know, it's up to you, bubbles or squares or whatever. I'm going to draw a square here. And I'm just going to make this square the same color as the darker blue buttons. And then I'm going to duplicate this square, and I'm going to make this one the same color as the light blue buttons and duplicate the square and make this one the color of the green buttons and duplicate the square and make this the same as the red buttons or the red circles. Okay, now we're doing something pretty darn good here. Over here you see it's rectangles 24, 25, 26, and 27. Let's rename these. I'm going to call this one an R button. Button. There we go. 26 is going to become a G button. 25 is going to become an LB button, and 24 is going to become a DB button. Okay, so watch this. I click on the animation that says animate the entrance of light blue 01, and that's just happening on click. I want to change that. On my animations tab at the top of the screen, Right here underneath the button for animation pane, there's a thing called trigger. And I can say on click of the light blue button, make this light blue one appear. And the same thing for DB01. On click of dark blue button, DB02. On click of dark blue button, G01. On click of green button, 
LB02 on click of light blue button. You can see exactly what I'm doing. Going through here and assigning them to red button. Now one last item. You can see here the light blue button says the first time I click the light blue button these three light blue circles will appear. The second time I click on it these three light blue circles will disappear. Then here when I click the dark blue button they'll appear right here you see this this needs to be on click. There we go. So on the second click the dark blue ones disappear. This one right here needs to be on click and this one right here needs to be on click. So now when I click the light blue button the first time it appears, when I click it the second time it disappears. First time appears, second time disappears. Well let's see whether it works or not. So hit F5 on my keyboard to start the show. As you can see the grid comes up with nothing on it and if I hit the forward arrow this is very important you see here it goes to the end of the slideshow it doesn't show me what's happening on that slide because of course that only triggers when I push the buttons so if I click the blue button or the light blue button or the green button or the red button or I click the blue and the light blue and then I deselect the green you can see how I can turn these on and off just like a light switch. So by adding both an up here and a disappear animation to the bubbles on the chart, I'm able to make them show up and turn off every time I click that trigger on and off.